So Marvin is a character who's so far shown us that he's not afraid to speak out against his siblings' ideas and ways of doing things, because he's someone who clearly likes to go on the offense and attack, whereas Raquel and Lulu are two of the more calm siblings, they're calculated and would rather take more of a strategic approach to situations. But there comes a time where an approach like Marvin's is needed, and then there's a time and a place to be strategic and calm. So in this video, we're going to dissect episode 4 synopsis, what we can expect from Marvin and Kanan, Marvin and Jukebox, and the war between Yurika and Raquel. But if you are new to the channel and you haven't done so already, then remember to smash the subscribe button if you want to see everything Power Book 3 and Power Universe related over the coming months. But let's have a look at episode 4 synopsis, which is called Don't Sleep, and all bets are off when a police raid clears out Rack's competition, promises are broken, secrets are revealed, and revenge is swift. So after Rack gave the information to Howard in the last episode, they're going to raid Unique and clear out her competition and it's good news for Rack but bad news for Unique because she's going to be taking on Unique's business but the thing is revenge is going to be quick and swift. Unique's not going to sleep. Yeah sure it's good news for Raquel but only in the short term because let's talk about Marvin and the part from the synopsis where he says promises are going to be broken because there's been a build up since the very first episode and they've been building and building and building to a turning point for Marvin's character because he's someone who's clearly showed us from the very first episode in the hospital that he wanted to go on the offense. He wanted Unique to feel them after Unique's crew hit one of their soldiers but Raquel didn't want to start a war, instead she used it to leverage a better deal when it came to the corners that Unique and Raquel have. Now in the first instance I do feel that Raquel was right not to hit back, but over time I do begin to feel that Marvin was actually right when he said that they shouldn't have given up those corners to Unique because Raquel did put them in a weak position. She put them in a situation where she would have to take the information of Unique's re-up location to Detective Howard to get some of their business back that she lost to Unique and at the end of the day Raquel gave up those corners to stop a war. Raquel sacrificed D-Wiz to stop a war and protect Kanan as well, but regardless of all of this and all of her actions, they're just building up to a huge war with Unique anyway. Unique took Raquel's corners, she hit back and now it's going to be Unique who hits back because revenge is going to be swift in episode 4 and it's going to be a constant back and forth and at some point something is going to have to give, people are going to have to die and pay the consequences. Marvin's aggression is something we've only seen a glimpse of but we're finally going to see what makes him the muscle to Rack's drug ring in episode 4 when he crashes his car into these robbers, he's going to catch a few more bodies by the season finale as well. But what makes Marvin's character so interesting is he's always up to mischief and he's always that guy in the family who's just causing trouble. Raquel was against him throwing a party, so he goes and throws a party anyway. He's gonna go and do something even worse in the next episode, and this is where promises could be broken because he uses Kanan's help to borrow some money from the stash house. He tells Kanan they're gonna be in and out, and Raquel's not even gonna know that they've been in there. And this is who Marvin is. He's always gonna go against his family in the sense that he's gonna cause problems for them in the short term before he helps them fix the problems that he created himself because one thing you can't doubt from Marvin is his loyalty. His ways are always going to be different to Rack and Lulu, but he's a family man first, and him telling the old man with a dog to never give up on his family wasn't something that was just there in the first episode for the sake of it. They were telling us that Marvin will never give up on his family, and when push comes to shove, he will be there to protect them. But in some ways, he does contradict himself because we all learned in power that Jukebox was kicked out of her house by Marvin when he found out about her sexuality. So let's just talk about Marvin and Jukebox because episode 3 did reveal why Jukebox is such a hustler and she never gets involved in what Marvin's in. But as I said, he's someone that doesn't give up on family, but he does with Jukebox. There was a little awkward exchange between them when he asked her if she wanted a ride and there's going to be a big falling out between the two to come soon. At some point we'll see them have a talk or an argument where they finally let each other know how they're feeling. They'll confront each other and we'll understand why there's such a disconnect between the two characters and why Jukebox is the way she is. She made a point about not getting into the shit that Marvin's into which is why we see her focused on pulling licks and robberies instead of getting into the drug game and the disconnect between Marvin and Jukebox will come to a breaking point and I think we'll see this this season in the coming episodes. Now Marvin snooping around in his daughter's room tells me that he's someone that doesn't even know his daughter at all and someone who doesn't listen to her either and I do expect their relationship to kick off in the coming episodes or two and they've definitely been building up to Marvin finding out about Nicole and later on in the season we'll see shit really kick off between the two and it's really going to push Jukebox away to the point where I think she's going to connect with either Detective Burke or Detective Howard which is why she ends up being a cop in the future and Marvin pushing her away and kicking her out the house will play a big role in the Jukebox that we saw and she's going to be up to no good pulling Lick and getting into trouble in the next episode as well. And a huge reason as to why I don't think they connect is because Marvin can't control someone like Jukebox. We've already seen in episode 3 of how strong willed she is, how much of a tough character she is, she's got a mind of her own and someone who doesn't even want to be in the business that Marvin's in. And because Marvin can't control someone like Jukebox and tell her what to do, you see him move to someone who he can control and that person's Kanan. And that's because Kanan is still learning. He can control someone like Kanan. He's far less advanced than Jukebox is at this age and he wants to learn. He wants to learn the game and this is where 
promises will be broken. So let's just talk about this in a bit more detail because it sounds as if Marvin is going to tell Kanan to help him move some of the money around at the stash house, even though he's supposed to be nowhere near it. You won't ever see Marvin ask Jukebox what to do, but he's about to get Kanan into a whole lot of trouble. Now it certainly isn't the right way of doing things from Marvin's perspective, but he wants to help Kanan and he wants Kanan's help in return and he's always going to have his back just like we saw in the trailer. They do plan on returning the money that they're going to take from the stash house, but Unique is going to cause a problem for them and this is where revenge is going to be swift and brutal. He's going to hit the stash house where we know who he's got the information from and that's Davina. He's going to rob Raquel's organization. We'll try to anyway. We don't actually know yet if he's going to be successfully robbing the stash house yet because this is where I think Marvin can make up for it all and have Kanan's back. When he does get robbed and attack at the stash house, Marvin will probably come to Kanan's rescue because as you said, he's a family first kind of guy and he's going to look out for Kanan. But Unique is going to pour petrol on the fire with the bad blood between the two crews and Marvin is going to make the situation a whole lot worse too. There's going to be consequences and deaths in the next episode and we'll see Unique dropping a body or two in episode 4 by the looks of this image. It's probably someone from Raquel's crew and I saw a lot of comments mentioning Scrappy in a few of my last videos but it's definitely not Scrappy. I can't see it being Scrappy because you just have to look at his character description and it'll tell you that he's going to play more of an integral role as the show gets deeper. So let's just have a look at his character description because I believe this is one character who I've not actually gone through in terms of his character description. He's going to play the tough and stubborn Scrappy, one of Rack's most trusted soldiers, with the street savvy as strong as his heart and loyalty to his crew. He reluctantly watches over Kanan and teaches him the inner workings of the family business. Now we've seen him reluctantly watching over Kanan but we haven't seen him teaching him the inner workings of the family business just yet and this is why there's still so much more to come from Scrappy's character. You talk about stick and move and how Scrappy has a quick mind and quick feet in the streets. I'm sure Kanan will learn a thing or two from Scrappy. So for me Unique is definitely not killing someone so close to Raquel and the Thomas family just yet and it definitely won't be Scrappy for me. I definitely see a death or two coming in either side in the coming episode and Marv is going to be heavily involved in the coming episode and Unique will be dropping a body or two as well. But I think it could be someone else's from Raquel's organization or could be Smurf who gave up the reapplocation to Raquel in the last episode. Now I feel Rack made a big mistake. Although she did what she had to do to protect Kanan, Unique warned her very early on that Kanan was a weak spot and everything has just been a knock-on effect since Kanan pulling the trigger which has slowly resulted in them being in a war. Now Unique is going to be very clever. He's going to use Davina to get to Kanan and that will lead him to get to Raquel. So I think we could be seeing some real chess moves from Unique in the coming episode as he starts to plot his revenge real quick. But that's just an overview of the synopsis for episode 4 and a breakdown of what to expect with some predictions surrounding this image of Unique shooting someone. For me it's definitely not Scrappy because he knows how to stick and move. But bodies will be dropping in the next episode and it's going to be an action packed episode and a build up to a big twist at the midway point that we keep hearing about from the actors. So I want to see what this big twist could potentially be. But let me know your thoughts and predictions down below on episode 4. Drop all your thoughts and death predictions down below in the comment section. And of course if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so already then remember to smash the subscribe button if you want to see everything Power Book 3 and Power Universe related. But as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.